Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name's Keith and I'm your host. Come on in. Let's see what our next video is all about. Okay, we're all set up here. We've got the roller stand here on our mark when we did the other three inch. Uh, we put it in here. We marked on the floor where this is at. This shaft out here is 200 and, uh, uh, 224 inches long. So we need to get 112 inches. 112 inches just falls inside here before it gets to the taper. But if we get the taper stuck into the end of the lathe and then sitting down on here, we can move it from there. We got to adjust them up and down, get the alignment just perfect and a three inch will go through the lathe. So let's go ahead and get that in here. First off, I get the, the shaft over here in my hand on the forklift. Okay, I'm just inside there now. Now I need to bring her down and then we need to swing her into the other cradle here. Okay, that should be it. Okay, we're gonna back out. There we go. All right, all right, we're a little high on this roller here. Not by much. All right, I gotta get my wire wheel and do some cleanup. We could have done it out there on the ground, but I didn't feel like being on my knees. Not my favorite thing to do. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a little cleanup right in here. And then, uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll slide her in. That way she's nice and clean. This section right here has got to go all the way through and in front of the chuck 
that means that tail stock's going to be coming off and we're going to be resting on the steady rest on the other side. So we'll be holding with the chuck and the steady rest and we're going to do the prep machining and then set it up and well build this right in the lathe. We grabbed our stainless steel wire cup wheel. Um, this is the only thing that you really want to clean marine shafting with because you don't want to scratch it and you don't want to embed any steel in it. If you use a wire, a standard wire wheel onto it, you will put rust into the metal. All right, I wire wheeled it and then I wiped it down with some acetone so it's kind of clean. And now I can go ahead and I can, I can muscle it on in. I tapped that roller over. It looks like we're pretty well set so far. So we got to get it in there first. All right, now I hit something. Of course, I didn't open up my chuck. And yeah, hey, it's hitting the jaws. <laughs> We're gonna slide her in the rest of the way here. We have a uh, steady rest here and the tailstock is set up. We open the gap here now. Uh, plenty of room for this to flow through. We'll get it inside the door so we can shut the door. Another foot. Okay, we make contact with our tail stock, it feels like, and we can shut the door. All right, let's do that. Keep some heat in here. Okay, we're running through there. We want to set our steady rest for this diameter. Um, right now, I'm kind of set on a wear area here. So I want to set it like right in there. That looks like a good diameter right there. All right. Tail stock, that's good. All right. Let's put it in gear here. Hey, this is running pretty good all the way down here. All right, we're set now. Now we're gonna go ahead and we'll move our gantry over here, lift the tail stock, and then we just loosen this up here. We'll leave it right in that, that area, tighten down. We'll push this in the steady rest. We'll just push right down the ways until we get the working area out here where we wanna see it, and then we'll set it up, redial it, and then we'll start cutting it. Okay, we've got this loose and we oiled the, the surface on the ways there we're going to take this off for a second here now i'm just going to i'm just going to undo two of our jaws here and i kind of like i like four and one i i just always kind of remember the same ones because in reality you got two jaws that hold your part where you want it the other two jaws are going to tighten it all right Let's push this down until we get this open here where we want to. All right, two to three inch mic here so we can get, we can measure some of the undersizes as well. All right. <clears throat> I come over here to this area I said was good and it's reading about a thousandths over. And I get a thousandths over all the way to this line right here. So we're gonna say right there is that line right there. Then it starts deteriorating. 
Okay, so we're coming down this like five under. And then it takes a jump down to like 10 under here. The farthest down here is almost a hundred thousands undersized. The rule of thumb for how much wear you can have on a packing area before it would be called out for detrimental repair would be 2% the shaft diameter. So every one inch would be 20,000. So this is a three inch shaft, so it would really only be 60,000. So this is worn 40,000 more as far as criteria to make the judgment call to replace this material here and fix this loss of diameter, all right? So then I, I just wanted to check on this side here because I, I looked at it and I said, oh, it's polished, but how far under it is? Uh, that's five under, five under, until it gets about right there, and it's two under for the rest of that. So I'm gonna just call this diameter, or this position right here. So we're gonna undercut and replace the material between there. That's the projected repair right there. All right, let's get this dial back in. We bring in our four and our number one jaws back in here. And we put the mag base back up here. Okay, we're running out about five, so let's bring that back in. Here's the four, we're tightening the four. And now we're running about two. All right, that's running pretty darn true right there. I'm just going around because I want to make sure that they're all snug. We're not just falsely holding one or the other. All right, that looks good. Okay, we're set up, let's cut it. DNMP is what we're gonna use to cut it. We like the angle that we lead in with and then when we finish making our cut, we put our, our, uh, our uh, left hand bit in there, same thing. And then we put the angle or chamfer on there. When we start a weld and we come across and we weld into both sides there, it gives us equal uh, entrance and exit. Sometimes we like to just dial it in as we're going. We'll figure out what the next pass will be uh, to make that all happen in one cut, but um, we came pretty close to it. And it should be contacting again because that little deep area right there was the deepest area. Looks like the shaft was lobing also when it was wearing because you can see I have the shaft running perfectly true right now or pretty damn true and so you can see that that means the shaft was lobing. We 
took a ball peen hammer and a piece of cardboard and we made a couple templates or temporary inserts to look at the shapes we needed to cut out of stainless steel plate. All right, now they're not representing the thickness, they're just representing the dimension or the shape that we need. Then once we had them in here, we laid them on top of each other and one or two of the areas aren't exactly the same, but they are pretty darn close. So, we drew them on here by taking our special little pointer that we have right there and pinpointing on our little sketches here a couple points. We basically put a point here, a point there. We come straight on two different areas. There's a point there and somewhere in here we put a point and then we hit the points up there and there. And then all we needed was a midpoint on each of our curves and then we just use the spline setting and pick that those dimensions between the straights and the points there and we come out with the two shapes on the screen and then after that we took each one and we kind of just did a, a speed check this is not cutting this is just outlining and we ran this a couple times on each one so now we're ready to cut out our shapes and then we'll hand grind and fit them and shape them into place we're going to go ahead and broach our keyway in our coupling here We've got this set up on the table. We already checked and made sure that we had adequate height for setting up our push each time. Now, the taper is three quarter inch per foot. <clears throat> and we like to set this up so that we're kind of pushing straight down the side, okay? So, we're gonna have this plug in here. Um, right there and the first push is going to be right there let me raise this up a little bit here okay okay now that's aiming towards me and we're gonna grab a level here real quick. All right, so if we come off the back here and we can see that it's leaning, leaning towards us. And we need to go ahead and pick up on this front side. I like to take a piece of key stock and lay it underneath here. And we're just using that for pressure there. We're gonna kind of put this as square as possible. And now, we're gonna put the square back here and we're gonna see that our bubble is pretty close in the middle. I'm using a 5 16 in here. 5 16 and this diameter right here is like seven and three quarter. Not that that's the ratio that you're gonna need or whatever, it just happens to work right now setting in here. So I know I'm gonna be pushing fairly straight. That's the importance of setting up, <clears throat> pushing a brooch with using the taper and that's just that your brooch is going to travel in line with your ram otherwise you're going to have issues on going up and down even though it is not a hundred percent perfect in line i'll come on it and then let off come on it let off and that's because i'm letting the brooch go where it wants to go in there i don't want to cause even though they're not <clears throat> they're not connected to each other there is some force that actually helps push it one way or the other way um, it, as far as guiding through here, ductile material doesn't need any lubrication, so I'm not going to be running any cutting fluid on this um, cutter at all. And I'm going to push it dry. Okay, the gesso meter says 63 thousandths. 
And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take this tooth here. We got 883. And we go up here. And we got 954. So these do correspond with about the amount that it would take from the start to the finish of a cut. Anyway. Well, basically, you're going to broach increments of 1 16th of an inch of depth. Okay, let's see how this works. That sounded pretty rough, didn't it? <laughs> well, this came out the other end with no chips. I want to stare down the bore because sometimes, sometimes a, a, a brooch will want to suck. So let's see how it was doing on the other side or the bottom of the cut. We know that this is about a sixteenth of an inch here. And, and it could be a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch. But it's not drastic. Okay, we do see some uh, fretting on the back side of this, so I'm going to go take and I'm going to smooth this out a little bit and take a look at the inside there. I just want to make sure we can grind some clearance on the side here. This back is still nice and smooth. That's where the nasty sound was coming from. Okay, how many of you thought that was going to be toast? <laughs> All right, we took the galled area off the corner of the brooch both sides we had one galled area down in here we took the diamond uh, uh, cutoff wheel we dug that out we grabbed a parallel and we put some paper in here and we massaged this and we put this in here and she feels good once again um, I still, it, I don't know exactly what it caused or a piece of crap or something got in there or this was too sharp and, and my corner wasn't sharp enough. Um, I'll, it, it doesn't hurt to have a relief on these two corners. You're pushing against the back. In fact, actually, after you put a shim in here, your shim is rattling in here as well. So it's not tight to the corners. So... At least I know I'm not going to be touching tight into the corners again. All right, so I do have shim here. We're ready to rock and roll again. We just need to get this reinserted and get it in line with our brooch. And we do that by just putting the brooch in and... We got to lift up our ram there. That's in our way. We're going to hold this tight with our hand.
Okay. We're in line. All right. go again oh the reason why I didn't push it back out the other way is I have had uh, my issues with brooches over the years and pushing it the other way never comes out pretty so Okay, that sounds a lot more like a proper brooch pass right there. Okay, that drug the That drug the shim in behind it. Now for you guys is hey, put some damn oil on there, please. <laughs> okay. We'll just put it on the shim on the back side. And we'll go ahead and we'll put a, just a couple drops on the back side here of the brooch. We are asking it to slip through there. We got two shims in there now. Okay. A little oil on the back side gives us no issues. Okay, this is gonna be our last push through, and that was that was the last one that went through. Make sure there's no dirt between them. And then here's our last shim we're gonna add. And there's some oil on that side there. Here we go. That sucked it in too, so it's gonna follow it through, so it still gives us a true slot. All right, and that should be it. We broke in our brooch now, <laughs> so our three-inch guide can uh, can do couplings, propellers, whatever. 
three quarter inch brooch. I think this set just kind of reminded me why I use strapping material, which is about half that thick. So I could put two of them together and that's 30,000. So I'm taking like half as much as far as the bite going. And I think it has a big difference on pushing a brooch. The more material you're pushing, you know, if you lighten the depth, you're gonna be just making it a little easier. But the proofs in the pudding and the keyway looks sweet. And I am to the proper depth. So we're ready for the next step. This coupling needs to have some bolt holes for the flange put in, and they're going all the way through the whole coupling. Until next time, get her done.